much. And with us now from Washington is the head of the TSA, John Pistol. Mr. Pistol, all pat downs, even those considered standard, are now more invasive than they were before October 29th. Why the change in procedure? Well, Katie, we, we are dealing with the current threat environment that we're aware of, that we face a, a determined and innovative uh, terrorist group in Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda in Arabian Peninsula, which has proven adept at uh, concealment and design of bombs that can bring down both passenger airlines and cargo airlines. So what we're trying to do is provide the best possible security while balancing the privacy issues that are, are equally important and how we do that in a blended fashion. Right, and I know TSA screeners are now having to deal with some very sensitive issues, as we just heard, cancer patients, people who may, may have prosthetic limbs. Have they been required to go through additional training as a result of this? Each security officer uh, is, is held to the highest level of, of uh, professionalism, and our, our goal is to treat each and every passenger with dignity and respect. Now, obviously, from the reports we just heard, that uh, apparently has not happened. I did talk with one of the passengers that you interviewed uh, this afternoon, and we had a good discussion about uh, wh what his experience was. And we finished the conversation by him offering to provide uh, training and assistance to our screeners, basically to sensitize them to the issues that are involved. So that's our goal. With nearly two million people traveling every day, uh, that, that is the, the challenge that we deal with. But each security officer is trained to deal mm -hmm. with those situations. And, and that certainly shows uh, your contention that this program is evolving. Uh, when might you implement a new policy if you find that it is, in fact, a better balance of ensuring both security and privacy? So we've had an extensive outreach to a number of the, the groups that, do, that represent people, such as you interviewed earlier, and we try to make sure that we are sensitive to those issues, including things such as private screening and discreet ways of informing a security officer that there is perhaps an external medical device, something that mm -hmm. people should be aware of, or a prosthesis. Uh, but then we also try to ensure that each individual has that opportunity uh, to, to engage the security officer in a way that the, they can assure the officer and that officer can have the assurance that there's not somebody who is trying to conceal something that could cause a threat to aviation. So you don't know when you might be changing the policy, if so in fact you do. Yes. So what we have done is go back to those uh, entities such as the GAO and the, the inspector general who have done covert testing to show that we are not being thorough enough in our screening because they're able to get through the screening, mm -hmm. gone back to them and to say, okay, how can we be better informed if we modify our screening, uh, then w what are the risks that we deal with? So that's what we're dealing with. All right, John Pistol of the Transportation Security Administration. Mr. Pistol, thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you.